take a look at the uh, Prototino kit. It comes in a simple little bag like this. Now let's take a look what's inside. Let's dump it out. Keep in mind, this is an Arduino clone. And when you see the number of parts that are actually in there, you might be surprised. Well, first of all, we have our AtBega 328 chip. That's our microcontroller. It's already got the bootloader installed on it, so it's ready to go. Here's a little socket that you put on the board so that you can plug the chip in and out easily. You don't have to, to solder the microcontroller directly to the board. Here's the circuit board itself. It's kind of cool. It's got a nice prototyping area on it there. And then the complete Arduino clone goes in this section here. We'll talk uh, more about this board later. Some more parts here. The, there's a crystal um, to set the speed for the microcontroller. And it, uh, that circuit uses these uh, two little tiny capacitors. There's a couple resistors in here. There's a voltage regulator right there, which is an LM7805, a standard voltage regulator, and uh, brings everything down to 5 volts for our circuits. And the electrolytic capacitor, a few other capacitors, and an LED. That's what's inside Prototino Quick Kit. So, in the next section, we'll look and see what we can do with one. What we'll do is take a rat's nest that looks like this, with our breadboards and wires going everywhere, and turn it into something that looks like this. Here's an original Arduino. It's the Arduino Uno, what you would typically get. There's clones of this thing uh, that you can purchase as well. We're talking about the Prototino, which is a clone. But the first thing you probably notice about this particular Arduino is that the microcontroller chip is missing. I pulled it out, and I'll show you why, and I'll show you where I put it. But uh, when you look at the Arduino Uno, there's a lot of hardware attached to this board which gives you a lot of options so that you can hook it up with USB port, you've got a UART chip that will handle that, you've got a built-in voltage regulator, there's there's a lot of options, a lot of things going on on this board. When you finally get your project built and running, you've built it with a breadboard, you've got wires jumping all over the place, the software's working the way you want it to go. When you get right down to it, once all that work is done, you don't need most of what's on this board. You can run your program with just a few parts, like we saw just a few minutes ago, the parts that are in the Prototino board. So let's take a look at a Prototino board that's already been assembled. And guess what? That chip right there is the one that was right here. So you can do all your work, all your programming as you normally would with Arduino, and then when it comes time to build your final product, and you're going to install it on your Prototino board, you just swap out that chip. Take the chip that came out of the bag, put it in here, and away you go for your next project. So let's walk through this and see what we've got going here. Uh, we'll start with the microcontroller section itself. That's located here on the far left-hand side of the board. We talked about it a few minutes ago. We have our microcontroller chip right here. The crystal that uh, you saw in the kit is here along with a pair of capacitors. We've added a capacitor in here which uh, does some filtering, smooths out the 5 volt voltage for the microcontroller. It, it just sits here and ri rides across so 5 volts and ground at that point. Up here at this end of the board there's a 1,000 ohm resistor sitting right in here, and that resistor pulls pin 1 high. Pin 1 on our microcontroller is the reset pin, and if we don't make sure that it stays high uh, random time, the program can reset itself and start all over again, which is generally something you don't want to have happen. But there may be times when you do want to reset it, so I've added this jumper pair here. I can short it out with a screwdriver which will reset my program and when I put this in a cabinet 
I'll be able to take this header, run it up, and actually have a reset switch. In the upper corner of our project right here, we have our voltage regulator. It's a 5 volt voltage regulator. And it uses a few capacitors, and that gives us a nice steady 5 volts to run the whole project. There's a place in the board here for an LED and another resistor that is a current limiting resistor for the LED, which I did not install because over on my side of the board, I already have an LED that would be doing the same thing. They would be redundant, so I just left it out on this side of the board. I've separated the board here with this 20-pin header. What I want to do is allow for some uh, future expansion, modifications of the software, things that I might want to do with my project that I haven't done yet. So I have access here to all the pins on my my marker controller. So that's something that uh, that I can use in the future. This section of the board over here is my domain. This is where I put my components. There's actually two circuits in here that I designed and built separately, but I put them together on the board here because they function together. We will take a look here in a minute at what they are and what they do. We've been talking about the Prototino and how we can use it to take a project we've been working on with an Arduino and move it from the breadboard stage onto a prototyping board where our components can be attached permanently and uh, we have a project that we can move around and enjoy and share with people uh, over and over again. And it frees up our Arduino for the next project that we want to work on. So we've talked about what goes over on this side here and looked at how that becomes our microcontroller. This is our Arduino clone. This side of the board is set up for prototyping and it's very nice and handy. It's got contacts on both sides of the board which make it really easy to solder and attach things. I like the fact that it has these two rails right down the center of the board. Down here at the very bottom we have access to 5 volts and ground. Now in my project I've installed the voltage regulator. If your project doesn't require that voltage regulator because you've already got 5 volt supply coming in, you can tie it in directly right in here. This 5 volts right here is, is tied directly to the output of the voltage regulator chip. And so what we can do though is just simply put a jumper across here from 5 volts to this rail here and a jumper across here uh, between ground and now you have two rails here, a 5 volt rail and a ground rail that makes it real handy for you to install your parts and components. An IC socket will bridge right across those and they're a real convenient location when you start hooking up those parts. I like the fact that the prototyping section has these triple pads uh, which make it real easy to attach various components right to the ICs. The IC straddles that and leaves you two more holes to add components. And then over here we have some double pads and again we have some double pads on the far side of the board. That makes it easy for us to add headers and things to hook up to external devices. So the, the board is uh, real easy to use and of course there are a bunch of uh, single pads that are all there ready for however you might want to use them. If we look here at the board that I have completed. This is a project that copies Morse code. And there's two main components here. We have a tone decoder here, which is this chip, and all of the support material here, the, the, the components that are needed to make that chip run. And then down here at the bottom, we have an amplifier chip, which uh, comes in handy and allows me to amplify uh, audio that is either being generated here on the board or is coming in from an external source. And I put some jumpers in here to, to select that. So the way it works is that we have these pins here that are providing audio 
to the tone decoder. This is the input section right here. There's four pins here so that you can take two of them and run them straight to the speaker jack, say, on an HF radio. And that audio will then come into the circuit. However, as an option, I've given you the opportunity to uh, use an external microphone, like one of these little breakout boards. This microphone right here with this ribbon cable will connect straight onto this project and provide the audio in here uh, so you can acoustically couple the the board to the source of the Morse code. Otherwise you just use these two here if you're going to come right straight from the receiver itself. The audio goes into the, the chip here to um, determine which tone, what frequency the chip decodes. You have a circuit with some capacitors and then this trimmer pot here. It's a, a multi-turn potentiometer or variable resistor. And uh, as you tune this, it will determine which frequency, audio frequency, will be triggering the hot, the signal that goes into the microcontroller itself. And so that's tuned right there. The blue LED will blink when it hears a tone to the tuned frequency. We have a couple pins right here. This provides audio out because in addition to decoding tones, this chip right here also is an oscillator. And so you have a way of actually listening to the tone that would be decoded. And so as you tune it, you can hear what it is you're hunting for and use that to get this right on the frequency you want. I've got some jumpers down here so that we can take that audio, run it through our amplifier chip, and use that as, a, as an easy way to tune this to the frequency that we want. Kind of get things close together. The amplifier is a simple, straightforward amplifier. has very few components. It's got a capacitor here and a capacitor there. The jumper lets me select what input goes in to the amplifier. And then over here, I have pins that just go out to a speaker. And this whole thing right here will drive the speaker. It's interesting that the audio IC over here and the microcontroller over here run on 5 volts. But we're running the amplifier on 9 volts. So I'm taking the 9 volts right from here because I've been using a 9 volt battery and using that to amplify the signal with 9 volts instead of 5 volts it gets a little bit louder. I have a resistor over here and a jumper so that if the audio is louder than I really want I just pull this jumper and it mutes it a little bit. It brings the, the audio level down. On the underneath side of the board I have this angled header here. It's an 8 pin header and with that I use a ribbon cable and uh, that provides all the lines that go over to the board that has my LCD panel on it and I use a liquid quartz display which will print out the code. So that is an overview of all the components that's on the board. This what last one right over here is where we plug in our 9 volt battery. So there's Protogeno all set up neat and tidy. A few wires on the back were needed, were needed and, um, but mostly everything is done on the top. And now I have it completely set up as a piece of hardware. I can move it around. It will always be the project that I used to have on my uh, breadboard.